Hello again, everyone. Uh, I'm your physics pal, Paul Lake, and I'm here to uh, solve a problem uh, called a, it's, it's a simple relative velocity problem. And this is the kind of problem that gives a lot of students a lot of, a lot of issues. So, um, so buckle in. Here's, here's what you need to know um, in order to solve this problem. You, you need to know how to express uh, basic vectors in uh, polar and rectangular coordinates. So if you're not familiar with that, go back and review that. Um, we are going to be talking about vector addition, very basic head-to-tail vector addition. So make sure you understand that. And uh, relative velocity. This is a relative velocity problem. So uh, you know, if there's some lectures or so on, I'll I'll, try, I'll include a, a link to a relative velocity lecture that I've made uh, in the uh, notes for this this video. But, um, but these are the things you should be familiar with before approaching this problem. So let's look at the problem. We got a motorboat. It heads due east at 12 meters per second across a river that flows southward with a current of 3.5 uh, meter. Oh, this should be meters per second. Um, of the current of 3.5 meters per second. Uh, we want to know what is the resultant velocity of the motorboat uh, to an observer on shore uh, from where the book from where the boat took off and then uh, if the river is 1360 meters wide how long does it take the boat to cross how long does it I mean time that's what we're talking about is time there and then how far downstream is the boat when it reaches the other side so let's let's uh, answer uh, this question the first thing I want to do I'm going to write down what, what's given and um, I want to, I like to draw a picture of it. So let's draw a picture of a river. Here's a bank and here's another bank. Okay, so here's the river. Um, and it said that the width of the river, and I'll call this uh, delta x for the river, is uh, 1,360 meters. That's, you know, from here from this bank to this bank, 1,360 meters. And I'm gonna call it delta x because, you know, we're gonna deal with north, south, east, west. But of course, north, south is our, our y direction and east, west is our, our x direction. Now, um, so here is our boat. I'll just draw our boat as like a little dash and we'd like to have a camera that's looking down on this problem. And this boat is moving, it says 12 meters per second, due east at 12 meters per second. So it's moving like this. Okay. But, and you got to pay attention, really focus right now. This is how fast the boat is moving in the water. Okay, so let, let's say this wasn't a, a river. Let's say this was a, a, a lake. Um, it would be moving at 12 meters per second. It would just be moving due east, like, you know, like this. So the velocity of the boat in the water is 12 meters per second to the due east. But the problem is, in, the, in this problem, is that the water is also moving. So um, the water is moving like this. Okay, so I'm going to call this the velocity of the water. The velocity of the water is given to be 3.5 meters per second. But what is this? Well, this is the velocity of the boat, and I'm going to use B as a subscript for boat. The velocity of the boat compared to the water. And that's going to be 12 meters per second. So the boat is moving 12 meters per second like this, do, 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 moving across the, but the river itself is moving, is kind of pushing it down at a rate of 3.5 meters per second. So the motion of the boat, see it's moving like this. See if the if the river if the if the river wasn't moving, if the water had zero velocity, the boat would just go like this. 
Now, if the boat had zero velocity and it was just the water that was moving, the boat would do this, right? At 3.5 meters per second. But it's doing both at the same time. It's moving 12 meters per second like this and 3.5 meters per second like this at the same time. I hope that makes sense to you. That's it's kind of kind of going down at a diagonal like that. But look for this word, heads due east, whatever, like a heading. A heading is the direction that you're pointed. But if the stuff that you're moving in is, is moving as well, well, the direction you're pointed is not necessarily the direction you're going, right? So anyway, well, let's 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 move along. Now, this notation, let me blow this up here. This notation right here. B slash W, this is how I express a relative velocity. This is the velocity of the boat compared to the water. Now, what about this? I don't have a subscript. With, well, I have a, the W there, but I don't have a slash, whatever. That's because that's the velocity of the water compared to an observer. Here's, let's draw a little observer right here. Here's our observer. And our observer is not moving. So this is... This is the velocity of the water compared to our non-moving reference frame or our non-moving observer. Okay. Now, uh, what are we trying to find? Let's really figure out what it is we're trying to find here. Let me. Well, for A, what is the resultant vector of the motorboat to an observer on shore from where the boat took off? So that's how, what is the velocity of the boat compared to this observer on the shore that um, isn't moving. So I'm going to say that's the velocity of the boat. The actual velocity of the boat compared to our non-moving observer, our non-moving reference frame. That's what that's called. So I'm going to denote it like that. And then for part B, if the river is 1,360 meters, how long does it take? So I'm going to call that delta T, the time it takes. Different teachers use different variables and notation, so that's okay. How far downstream is the boat uh, when it reaches the other side? So the boat, again, the boat is going to go, it's going to be pulled down like this. And I'm going to, oh, I didn't draw this very well, did I? I'm going to call the, the, the amount that it drops, let's say it goes from, from here to here. I'm going to call this our delta y. That's the, how, how far south the, the boat is going gonna, is gonna to move, how far south the boat moves as it's moving across the river. So I'm going to call that delta y. And notice that, you know, this sometimes what I, I, I draw what we're trying to find in the picture of the problem. That'll make the problem easier to solve. All right, let's get to it. Okay, now you may want to watch the video that I've made on relative velocity for this because I, I really don't have time to go, you know, redo the whole the whole lecture. But here, here we go. The velocity of the boat is equal to the velocity of the boat in the water plus the velocity of the water. So we have the, the boat in the water, we have the, the boat in the water, so we're going to add those two velocity vectors together. We're going to use vector addition to do it. Okay. And um, now, vector addition is not the same thing as scalar addition. You, you, you know, the best thing to do, if you can, is to draw a picture of the vector addition. So I'm going to take this first vector, boat in the water. Oh, let me put a vector hat on that vector hat on that. I'm going to draw it like this. So this is the velocity of the boat compared to the water. Now when you add vectors together, you know, plus we're going to add these two, you hook them up head to tail. So there's the velocity of the boat compared to the water. I put that there. Here's the velocity of the water. I'm going to add it to it. So I pick it up and then put it right back down there. Hook them up head to tail. Here's the velocity of the water. Okay. And that's my vector addition. And so the answer, when you add vectors by hooking them up head to tail, is start 
where the first vector started and where the second vector ends. So there's, we call it sometimes the result, the resultant vector. But this is the velocity of the boat. This is what the boat is actually doing as seen by this unmoving observer on the, on the, on the shore of the river. Well, um, I think we can work with this. This looks like a right triangle to me. But, and you can, you, you can go get right to the answer. You can use uh, Pythagorean theorem right away to get to the an inverse tangent right away. But I, I want to do this a little more rigorously. I want to show you the vector addition of this because you see, um, in this problem, the boat compared to the water plus the velocity of the water right away makes a right triangle. But you're going to have relative velocity problems where they don't make a right triangle. So I'm going to show you a way of solving this that works for no matter what angle these 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 vectors are at, they can be at all 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 different angles. Okay, so now when you add vectors, I like to put it in a column. Uh, so the velocity of the boat compared to the water, plus the velocity of the water. Okay. Now, when listen to me right now, when you add vectors together, they must be in rectangular coordinates. Do not add vectors together if they're in polar coordinates. You will get a wacky, wrong, embarrassing answer. <laughs> so don't do it. Do it like this. So let's put these in there, the x coordinate and the y coordinate for, for these uh, velocity vectors. Okay, so what's the x component of this? The velocity of the boat compared to, oh, it's just 12 meters per second. Okay, it's moving to the east, which we're calling positive x. So that's my velocity in the x. Now, what about the velocity in the y? Well, notice that the boat compared to the water is not moving in the y. If the, if the, water, if the water wasn't moving at all, the boat would just have velocity in the x direction. It would have zero velocity in the y. Well, compared to the water, it has zero velocity in the y direction in this problem. Now let's take a look at the velocity of uh, the water. Notice that the water is going south. Okay, that's negative y. So I'm going to put a negative 3.5 meters per second there. And how fast is it going in the x direction? Well, look at the vector. It has no component in the x direction. The water is going south. It's not moving to the west. It's not moving to the east. It's moving due south. Zero. Now I can add. So you can add x components of a vector together, and you can add y components together. And this becomes pretty easy, right? So the velocity of the boat is equal to 12 meters per second, negative 3.5 meters per second. And this is in the y, the x component, the y component. And this is my answer. You could, you know, you, you could put a box around this and call this your answer. Because really the, the problem didn't specify what kind of coordinates the um, answer should be in. But let's put it in polar coordinates, okay? Because they're using E south and, you know, they're using um, directions for this. So the way you do this, of course, is you use the Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude. The x component, square it, plus the y component, square it. And when you do that, make sure you square away that negative. You don't even need to put the negative in there, actually. So we're using Pythagorean theorem. Do the arithmetic yourself, but if you do, uh, well, what I got was, uh, I think it was 12.5. Uh, meters per second. Now that's the magnitude. Okay, that's good. But I need to know what the direction is. Well, look at the triangle, look at either here or there. And you can say, well, we need to use inverse tangent to do that. So let's, let's go for it. The angle is going to be the inverse tangent. This is for polar coordinates now. The y component, you need that negative, divided by the x component. 
Uh, you don't need to add, add 180 degrees because the x component is positive. And when you plug those values in, you get a negative angle, negative 16.23. We can go ahead and carry a little bit of extra digit. Uh, oh, but I want my, my, my answer. So this is my answer. It's 12.5 uh, meters per second at an angle of negative 16 point, uh, we'll go ahead and round it off to two degrees. Or you could say 16.2 degrees. Instead of leaving it like this, you could put 16.2 degrees um, south of east. I've, I've seen a lot of teachers express it this way. But this, either way, and, and, you know, especially if you've drawn a picture of the problem, you can really tell that that's, that's what you meant. Okay, so that's part A. Let's do part B. Now, the thing about components of vectors is that sometimes you, you just look at the problem and say, okay, all we need to do is, is uh, use, uh, is to, let's take a look at the components um, in a particular direction to get the time it takes to move in that direction. You see, um, the velocity in the x direction of this boat is equal to its displacement in the x direction divided by the time it took. Okay, and but but actually, it's the time it took to cross the, the river that we're interested in. That's what we're trying to find. So the time it takes to cross is going to be equal to the distance across directly across the x direction to the east. Uh, divided by our velocity in that direction. Um, so let's plug in our values. Uh, and what was, oh, 12. Okay, 12 meters per second. And so when you plug that in, you're going to get, uh, I think we got 113 point, I'll just round it up to 113 point, uh, yeah, seconds. And there's my answer. You see, even if, it doesn't matter how fast, like, what if you doubled the speed of the water in the river? What if it was going 7 meters per second? Well, you're still going across the river at 12 meters per second. So it's still going to take you 113 seconds to cross. The, the, the velocity of the water is not affecting the time it takes to cross that, that river. Because in this problem, we're moving, the, the boat compared to the water is moving directly, you know, perpendicular to the direction of the water itself. So this will work. Okay, now for part C. Well, um, we want to know what is, what is our delta y? Well, that depends on our speed in the y direction. And we could just do what I, we did above. The velocity in the y direction is equal to our displacement in the y direction divided by the time it took for us to, you know, the time to cross the river. And so, because remember, it's moving in the x direction at the same time it's moving in the y direction. So the time it takes to move across is the time it took to move downstream. So let's solve for delta y. And that's going to be equal to the velocity in the y times time. And so delta y, I'll off screen a little bit here. So delta y is going to be equal uh, to, um, well, what was the velocity in the y direction? Oh, it's, it's 3.5 meters per second. And how long, how much time were we moving at that speed? Well, it took us 113 seconds to cross that river and so delta y is going to be equal to negative oh wait where'd the negative come from oh the velocity is in the negative y direction uh i think it's 396 that depends on how you round it off i can't um meters or you could say delta y is equal to 396 meters south. Because in, in, you know, in, in rectangular coordinates, right, 
south is negative y. So you can either express it like this or like this. Either way is okay. And that's it. That is the whole problem. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, uh, check, check on the, uh, the notes. I, I do uh, physics tutoring. I'm your physics pal. I'd like to be your physics tutor. So get in contact with me if you need a, a good physics tutor. And uh, for now, that is all.